Hey, welcome back to the Relentless Positivity Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Martin. I've got a great guest today. Her name is Lacey Schaff, and she has a very important message because she's there today. She talked about she turned a personal tragedy in a way into a way to serve others. So, Lacey, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me and having oh, me. Oh, no doubt. When I heard about what you guys do, I had to have you on. So um, just tell, kind of, tell us a little bit about your story and how that led to your charity, Rikers Rainbow. Sure. So um, it's it's kind of a heavier subject because it does involve um, the loss of a child or the loss of a pregnancy. But um, my husband and I were expecting our second son and he was going to be born in July of 2020. And at my 37 week appointment, um, we went into the doctor and learned that his heart had stopped beating. So um, we elected to, to go ahead and deliver him. And we um, had him on June 20th of 2020. And um, it was during the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. So it kind of added a lot of insult to injury because family wasn't really able to come in. We weren't able to have the photographers. Um, but I have to give props to Huntsville Hospital because they really stepped up. They did get my parents in to meet him, our son Riker, and took some of the pictures themselves. So we do have those special mementos. Um, but while we were there, um, we were given a box and um, that's what we left with. And it was really awful for me to get a box because it felt really empty. It was right. just a, a really thick chapter book on grief and um, a couple of other little things. And while we were appreciative of it, it just, it didn't feel personal. Um, so <clears throat> I had told my mom that and she ended up buying me a book called Mommy, Please Don't Cry, There Are No Tears in Heaven. And it was the perfect book for a grieving mom. It's 12 pages long, it's short, it's simple, it's to the point. You know, um, it did take me a long time to read it, but once I read it, I knew I had to get it to other families. Um, so within a couple of weeks, I called Huntsville Hospital Foundation and asked them, you know, what would be the process for my husband and I to donate these books? We organized that and then it was my birthday. So I was like, you know what, I'll do a birthday fundraiser and raise some money for the books. I set the goal at 500 and then $15,000 later. Wow. Yeah. Um, it was totally unexpected. So that's a lot of books as you can imagine. Um, so we knew we had to take it from there and make it into something bigger that the community was behind it. So that kind of is what spawned, um, Rikers rainbow. Wow. Yeah. You knew you had something right there that there's definitely did. a definite yeah. need there. So let's tell us what all you do. It's not just books. What all do you do? No, so we went from just offering a book to the hospital um, to now we do a full bereavement box, kind of what I was telling you about before. And it's got a lot of gifts in there from, um, I have a couple of them. I'd love to show you. I'm going to kind of okay. reach around real quick. Um, sorry about that. One second. Um, we offer a number of gifts, including that book, um, a journal, a feather pin, um, there's custom earrings. It's from another nonprofit of a mom that has suffered through a loss. There's um, shower steamers, lotion, chapstick, matches. And then we have our own custom candle. It's kind of hard to see, I guess, maybe. Oh, um, yeah. But it has a really pretty graphic on there. Very cool. Um, and it smells like the popular volcano scent. Everyone loves volcano. And then my absolute favorite thing that we have inside of the box is we offer um, the family a memory plate. And they get to customize it with a name if they want to do the prints and the stats as well as the date. Um, and of course, they can customize the paint and the gender. And this is ordered at the time in the hospital. And then it comes to their door about eight weeks later. Oh, wow. So we do the bereavement boxes and we're in nine hospitals in North Alabama, always looking to expand. And then in this year of uh, January of 2022, we rolled out sibling support um, because at the time of the loss of Riker, we noticed that our daughter was struggling because we were. So um, we believe the mental health of the siblings is also something to be recognized and to take into consideration. So we started offering the siblings, um, it's called Sprite, and it's a book about grief and loss and how to handle it. And then it comes with like a little snuggly. Oh, as nice. So, um, and then in December, we offer Tinsel Trail Tree where parents can submit the names of angel babies and we put it on the tree. We do a lot of events in the month of October because that's Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month as well. Man, that's amazing. Yeah, so I mean, I read on your website, and I just, I didn't even fathom it, I guess, that you come home from the hospital just empty handed 
and just how horrible that would be. And just having, just having something like that could be, could mean so much to somebody. So that's really, really cool that you went through that and you're like, Hey, other people need this help. So that's, Absolutely. you know, in your pain, you reached out and helped other people. So, um, I know people want to get involved. First of all, how do people get these boxes? How do they get to the hospital? Does that, how's that work? Yeah. So we're partnered with nine of the hospitals. So we make sure we give them to them. Um, and then the hospital will give them to the patients at the time. Um, but we also, I mean, we really want to serve any family that we are put in touch with. So a lot of times we get requests to the website and we do mail them. Um, we just don't, can't do the full box because of the cost in the mail. Right. So, but we do mail them out. So we've sent them out um, across the country already, but um, you can go on the website and request how to get a box. Oh, cool. And, and on the other end, if, I, if I'm a hospital, I want to get involved. How do I do that? The same way you can contact me through the website. Um, <coughs> we are trying to hit up a lot of the major hospitals in North Alabama because we know that there's a need. And as long as we can continue to fund it, um, we want to make sure that we're able to sustain it. We don't want to just be a one and done with a hospital. We want to do this every year and continue to grow the program um, that's offered through Rikers Rainbow. All right. Yeah. If you're a hospital, get in touch. Don't, don't, yeah. don't be leaving out. And, uh, and then also how do people volunteer and donate and all that good stuff? How can they help out? So um, volunteering, there's a volunteer form on our website where you can go in and volunteer and we appreciate, you know, time, talents, money, um, gifts, any, any, any way that you can volunteer or get involved and then donating is also on our website. So 100% of donations do go directly back to families. Um, we are at times also able to offer financial assistance for final arrangements, whether it's a funeral or a marker or the night nurse or something like that. So 100% um, every penny goes back to the families and to the mission. Uh, awesome. Our mission is called, we simply say, be the light. Yeah, that's really cool. And you also have some upcoming events people can take part in. So the first one's going to be the Wave of Light. Tell us about the Wave of Light. So the Wave of Light is an international um, day of remembrance. So October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And then internationally, um, worldwide, people light a candle at 7 p.m. in their time zone in honor or in memory of um, a baby. So um we just kind of do it digitally online and encourage everyone to, you know, light their candle, take a picture, tag us. Um, and of course, write which baby that they are honoring the memory of. Yeah. And then we got another one coming up, Monsters and Maidens. This sounds really awesome. Tell me about this. Yeah, we're really excited to um, partner with the Rosé Society. Um, they're a group of women in North Alabama. They're their own nonprofit and they support other women um, or other nonprofits in various realms of, of community needs. So um, they chose Rikers Rainbow to be the beneficiary of the event for October 22nd. It's at Three Caves. They have a live band. There'll be drinks, dancing, um, food trucks, you know, costumes, um, just a really good event. So um, a lot of the proceeds will go to Rikers Rainbow and also with the Land Trust. So um, mad props to those women in that that organization. Oh, the Rosé said they are some powerhouses in the Rosé Society. They are. They, they get I stuff definitely done. get them on here too. Oh, yeah. They get <laughs> stuff done for sure. And and if you've never been to a dance at Three Caves, you got to go. It's so yeah, awesome. So you can absolutely. check it out. Go support your cause. The venue itself is just worth going for. That's right. And then you mentioned, mentioned Tinsel Trail. When would that start? Tinsel Trail, I believe this year it starts late November. Usually it starts around Thanksgiving. Um, we start putting out our Google form in October for parents to submit the names of the babies. And we do it on um, our Facebook page, which I encourage you guys to follow. And also we do it on our website. Um, last year we had about 85 angels available um, and we exceeded that amount. So we had to get a little bit of a little creative in ways that we could honor the, the babies on the tree. So um, we are limited in the space that we have and it usually goes pretty quickly, but um, it's, it's up in Huntsville downtown until January 2nd, I believe. So it'll be from Thanksgiving to about January 2nd. Okay. So uh, what, what's the future for Riker Fame? What do you, where do you see this going? You know, um, we never set out intending to start a nonprofit. It was, truly um the intervention of the holy spirit and he truly just led us to this place where we are now and he continues to do so really and truly we've just been the hands and feet and we just have to get out of the way right. um so when you ask me what the future is i don't know i do pray over it every night because it's something that i feel really passionate about and all while honoring the memory of Riker. and we do have some really big ideas and um 
we are working on a really large project right now, which I can't share about yet, but hopefully if it goes the way that we're hoping and praying, I'll be able to share about it soon. Um, and it would just be one more way to, for the bereaved community in Huntsville to be able to honor the memory of their baby or child or pregnancy that was lost. There you go. That's why they got to follow the website, follow the Facebook page. I'll link all that in show notes, but it's Rikers Rainbow. Rikers with a, a Y in there. In there. Um, it's .org, not .com. So I'll link all that because if you're a bad speller like me, you probably need a little help clicking. But <laughs> yeah. Lacey, thank you so much for coming on and tell us about you. Are, you are truly living out being the light in the world. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys having me on or you having me on. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I, you guys, please, please share this episode. Probably someone needs to hear what Rikers Rainbow does and maybe you can help them get connected with a new hospital or a, a family or something like that. Help them out, share that and keep sharing. Go check out that Facebook, support them, volunteer, donate, help them out. They are doing amazing work. So Lacey, keep up the great work and I'm excited about what you're going to bring next. I'm pretty, that sounds cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Joe. Thank you. All right. You guys have a great day and tune in for the next episode.